Hello, Grade 8 Bible. Welcome to Bible Lesson Number 1, the Book of Luke. Um, this is a review of what we talked about in class today as you're studying or as you want to fill in your notes. Um, the first part we discussed, what is the Bible? What is um, the purpose of it? Why was it written? Those types of questions. This is really a review from our last unit where we did the crash course of the Bible and um, we discussed everything more in depth. But remember, it's um, a book written by many people telling one story, and that story is of God um, working to bring his His glory to earth, creating it, bring, fall, having it fall into sin, and then him working to redeem it and bring it back, make it right so that we too as people can bring glory to God again. Um, it's written by many dif different authors over thousands of years. There's two different sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The New Testament begins with the fulfillment of the promises of the old, Jesus' life. Why do we study the Bible? We talked about how um, we are um, continuously, desperately in need of growth, of change, of being reminded of who God is, how powerful he is, what he's done for us, and who we are, how sinful we are, and how uh, we need to grow. So we get guidance, we get um, just a clear picture of who God is through the the Word of God, and that's why we need it every day, because left to our own devices, our own thinking, we would not choose God. We would be wandering away, and we need Him daily. And then we talked about being in the light versus the darkness, wandering around, trying to find something in the dark, and how um, this is our aha, our light bulb moment, that Jesus is the light to the world, and, and it was walking in darkness, it was lost in darkness, and He has brought hope, He has brought security. We didn't watch that. Um, then we talked about the good news, um, and that being the gospel, and how there's four different gospel books. The first one is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Luke was is the one we're studying. Was written by uh, not a, di a disciple of Jesus, and it was written more as a kingdom book. Um, the language is used in more of a government of of a rule of a reign of. You'll see that the kingdom of God is repeated continuously throughout the book. And then uh, how it contrasts with other ones. Uh, we look at the, like for instance, the book of Mark. It's written more as like a, a courtroom type. Here are like the um, prophecies about Jesus from the Old Testament or the Messiah. And this is how Jesus is meeting them all. And so um, the gospel of Mark is catered towards that. And so we get to uh, see that. The gospel means the good news. And so these books, the gospels, were written as letters to people. Just like you receive an email or something today. These gospels are the stories, the eyewitness accounts of the life of Jesus and the proclamation through um, orderly addresses, as you'll find out here. We talk about... Oh. Sorry. Um, the gospels, um, questions that people often have. Uh, what are the gospels? What does it mean? They are ordinary people who were inspired by the Lord to write the story of Jesus' life. They are eyewitnesses. Primary sources are used and really can't be refuted. So it's pretty incredible that way. Um, who is Jesus born um, from God through the Virgin Mary? Joseph, the father of Jesus, or the husband to Mary, and um, was of the house in the line of David and establishing that um, lineage of and covenant where God says through David he'll have an everlasting established kingdom and reign and so someone from David's or David's lineage will be seated on the throne and that is Jesus because he is seated on the throne victoriously. Uh, the virgin birth is the the miracle described in the prophecies and it's also a miracle and we talked about how miracles are evidence themselves that there is a God right how can something work outside of nature. If there is no God, we are left and limit, limited to the dimensions and the order and the laws of, of physics and science and other things. However, miracles are things that work outside of them. And there are so many stories of miracles happening, people being healed from cancer, um, all these miraculous things happening that happen outside of the laws of nature. And so this is another one. And then Angels, we talked a little bit about the difference between angels and demons, um, how angels are God's servants, bringing 
God's work, and we can identify the work of God by angels being there and as his spokesman, and then we identify the work of Satan through demons being there. Oh, uh, we also uh, introduced our five L's. These are the ways that we are going to be investigating, learning, and studying the Word of God this year. This is one method. We'll learn other methods of learning and studying God's Word, but um, very simply, our five L's. We look over the text, we read them, we summarize them. We'd be able to retell the story that it said, um, understand it, and then we label it. We find key words, um, things that um, stick out, important characters. Um, yeah, there we'll be working through that all in later in later videos. Um, then we link to the text. So we take key words like new creation, reborn, um, struggle, or the kingdom of God, and we link these to other places in the Bible, using the Bible to um, interpret the Bible. And so if there's like a word drop someplace where Jesus says, um, blessed are whoever, the poor. And so who are the poor, right? In his kingdom, it's a reversal of kingdom, washing, being a servant, leading by our servant leadership. Where do we link that? Where do we find that? And so from this linking, we're using the Bible to interpret scripture and we learn from the text. And the greatest crime you can ever do to yourself is to know something, but not to live it. So if you know the truth, but you still choose to walk away or abandon it, that is the greatest crime you could ever do to yourself and to those around you. And so you learn from the text, you learn how, uh, what God wants for people, uh, who he is, how we live under who he is, and then um, we apply it to our lives and we d discuss what it would look like to live in obedience to these verses that we're studying. Um, we did that, then we didn't watch the videos, and then we read these verses. You can pause here and read. However, um, we'd like to highlight some things. We talked about how um, Luke was writing this to a most excellent Theophilus who is considered a high government official. We don't know how high, but um, someone of stature in society. And then um, it's a confirmation of what he's already been taught. So we know that this person has already been exposed to the gospel of Jesus. And Luke is writing this letter to um, follow up, to, to give him more confidence in it. And so the orderly account, the eyewitnesses. And so we looked into who is this author. And we looked at how Luke was a Gentile, not born as a Hebrew or Jew, and so was outside the covenant of Abraham, yet brought in through Jesus' work to extend God's glory to the ends of the earth, to bring all nations, tribes, and tongues back to himself. And Luke is one of the first ones. He's a Greek, highly educated, strong vocabulary. He is a doctor. He's the only person who was not an apostle or um, Jewish to write the um, books in the Bible. So he wrote the Gospel of Luke and he also wrote the Book of Acts. And we'll be studying both of those during this year's units. So he was a doctor, physician, practiced medicine. He's highly esteemed. He was also very humble. And so we see this as another example of how he was bringing um, or just giving glory back to God. And just remains consistent with the purpose of the Word of God, the Bible, and that was to point to Jesus. Everything in the Bible is pointing to Jesus. Our need for him, right? God's desire for Jesus to come and fulfill his promises. And so um, he proves that and shows that through so many different ways of a servant heart and showing that God is at work. The acts of Jesus have not finished. Um, he met people, so he did not witness everything. He was conducted interviews and wrote the Bible or the book of Luke. Only Luke remained with Paul to his death. So Luke actually accompanied Paul to Rome as Paul was appealing to um, the Roman emperor at the time, the highest power because of his time in Jerusalem. He wanted a trial. And so that's where Paul eventually died and this, our stories of Luke eventually end there as well. And so we will begin our next chapter with um, with Jesus being baptized and you've been reading that as your homework tonight so thank you for staying tuned